Ireland. You wouldn't fetch me more shadows, would you? Well, a very merry chase, very merry indeed. You can't be serious. I've never been more serious in my life. Why are you imitating Tony Curtis? I'm not imitating Tony Curtis. I'm imitating Cary Grant. You're doing Tony Curtis doing Cary Grant. Oh. Cary Grant doesn't even do Cary Grant anymore. But I thought... See, I thought it would be a nice way to meet you. Original, but I suggest you do someone else. I do a great Jack Roach. Who's he? Me. <sighs> Very good. You do an excellent Jack Roach. Thank you. Uh, who are you? Gillian Bromley. Ah, oh, I always loved that name. I hoped you would. Hmm. Gillian. Sounds like an amount. You know, first thing after a billion. Right. Jack, darling, come meet Sir Samuel. Sir Samuel Sachs, this is Jack Rhodes. Sir Samuel? Well, do you think you are, Sheila? Eh? You used to bounce her on my knee. Mm, don't you, bugger? Yeah, she's quite a little bouncer, Sheila. Sheila? Sir Samuel? I'd like you to meet, uh... Take me to the food, my dear. I shall perish without immediate gluttony. Of course, darling. Oh, gorgeous. Who are you? Uh, Jack Rhodes. Uh, You're American. Yes. Not my fault. Been here long. I live here. See, darling, some of them have taste.
got in there. You must go to the loo, I'm bursting. Come on. I'm bursting, I must go to the loo, come on. I'm not too keen on large parties. We could find a small one. We could be a small one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it too well, Not at the moment. An order, petty four, petty five. Oh, I know, a cigarette. Mr. Rhodes is really... I think you'll like one of these. One Guinness? Several times. And I will see you again. I take it you always manage to get what you want. Good night, Mr. Rhodes. You said that. I can't say good night to you often enough. something about your shyness. I'm going to eat you up. Oh, and who can blame you? Now, I have to find my key, okay? I'll help you find it. Good evening, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, good evening, Miss Foxworth. I'll help you find it. Which is looking for my key? Lovely evening for it. I got it? Good. I got it. Why don't we just work our way up to you being down there? <laughs> you put mirrors on the ceiling. You naughty, naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they go all the way around. You must be very active. <laughs> What a sensational view. Where is it? It's my apartment. Good idea. <laughs> what would you like, Pev? Tell me. What would you like? Well, I think a new shirt would be fine. Why don't we go slower? You know, by the numbers. I think it'd be much more fun. Mm. Mm, nice. Do you sleep here? No. I sleep up there. Huh? Then we'll stay here. Hold it. I mean, don't move.
What are you doing here? Robbing you. Oh. Don't go away. Checkmate. Right. I thought I heard voices. Of course you did. That was you and I. Because there's nobody else here. Right? Right. There's nobody else here. Well, good night. Thank you for a perfect evening. Was I good? Wonderful. But I only just got here. Did you? I think so. I had too much to drink, didn't I? You don't like that, I know. Oh. That's all right. Give me another chance. Let me throw up. Oh, sweet. You don't have to do that for me, really. Well, though, I'm terribly sorry, darling. I wouldn't be any good to you. Pardon me, sir? I'm not talking to you, Waldo. Would you send me one of your better taxis? Thanking you, sir. Thank you. What do you mean? I was injured in the war. Not many people know about it. Oh, yes. Bit of a sticky wicket, but somehow I managed. I can help you. Let me try. No, no, no. It wouldn't be any good. You see, I, uh, I have to strap things on. Besides, all my batteries are dead. It'd be a mess. Go. Will you call me? God bless. Of course, I'll call you every day. Every day. Bless you. Bless you. Well, onward and upward. Are you decent? Would you be so kind as to hand me a shirt? I take it she's left. Yes, gone off to join a monastery. I'd like to step outside, or you want me to get a couple of chairs and come in there with you? <laughs> I don't want to seem ungrateful. But how did you get in? A skeleton key. Ah. You just walked past the doorman, I assume. Dolmen are always asleep. Mm, poor Waldo. He died about three years ago. We haven't had the heart to tell him. Did you find what you were looking for? Oh, I wasn't looking for anything special. Just so long as it cost a fortune to even the score, you might say. I see. Perhaps you were looking for this. How did you do it? Cigarette. Where are the diamonds? Little black box. Second drawer. Left hand side. A secret compartment. How do I know you're not lying? You don't. What is your game, Mr. No, Rhodes? no, no. It's my place, my bed, my questions. What's your game? I steal things. You were the Acme Robbery Company? I just take things, that's all. Why? Because it's exciting and dangerous. Not for the money. No. Oh. You're a kleptomaniac. How brilliant. Well, that's very common. I'm terribly sorry. It's not more stylish. You know why you do it? Well, I have... This is going to be long. It's love you really want. Attention, tenderness. You steal to compensate, to fill a void in your life. Void? Yes, void. It's a classic syndrome. But I think I can help. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just go and steal a good book on the subject. You can't go yet. Oh, blackmail. Only as a first resort. I want to see you again. When's good for you? Tomorrow night. 
Friday's better. I was going to get married Friday, but I can put it off a couple of weeks. Dinner. Lunch would be easier. Lunch would be fine. I'll pick you up around noon, OK? You uh, won't forget my cassage. It can be your treat. Hmm. You want good food or just expensive? Both. Oh, and uh, you might find that you need this. Tweed jacket inside pocket, one of the first places we look. Good night again, Mr. Rhodes. on Friday. Oh, lovely. What a wonderful start. You better pop round tomorrow. Tennis? Yes, I want to hear all the details. I'm very pleased, my dear. Very pleased, very grateful. Good night, my dear. Rather late for someone to be calling. Rather an exceptional situation, dear. She sounded beautiful. I'm sorry she woke you. Is she? Beautiful? More like stunning, I'd say. I was dreaming when the phone rang. It's the middle of August. We were in the south of France. You take me on holiday. Lovely, was it? Not really. It was pissing down rain. Did you read that article in the paper today? Which one was that? It said if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Can't have that, can we? No, dear. Good morning, Miss Bramley. No calls, Pilbro. Yes, sir. Unless it's major, of course. Somebody telephones the Queen and starts breathing heavily, that sort of thing. Yes, sir. Well, I must say, the sight of you cheers me, my dear. I can only say that I feel every bit as well as you look. Whereas I feel cheap and slimy. Ah, yes, well, police work can do that to you. My first year at it, I almost scrubbed my hands raw. I'm not with the police. Just so long as you're not against us, that's all we ask. Now, tell me, how did it go with Rhodes? I told you on the phone it went exactly as you planned. He introduced himself at the party and we're going out. On Friday? Absolutely. Well, that's splendid. About one week together should do it, I would think. You do presuppose, of course, that he will want to see me again. Modesty is boring. False modesty puts me in a coma. Jack Rhodes has always been attracted to beautiful women. Now, your very considerable looks, plus your wit and style, should rivet him for quite a time, long enough for him to be mine. You may fail. I refuse to entertain that possibility. You see, for the whole of my adult life, I have been a policeman. But soon, as comes to all who serve, I shall be turned out to pasture. Mandatory retirement, a sort of capital punishment for the old. But I would go without a whimper if I could bag the one man has always eluded my reach. Oh, I've come close. I've come tantalizingly close. But he's always been one step ahead. Jack Rhodes is brilliant. He's smooth. But he is also, I'm quite convinced, the most successful diamond thief at large today. And the thought of being forced to retire before I bested him... Oh, forgive me. I, I have run on. Helps to have a captive audience. I prefer to think of you as a cooperative one. 
Oh, yes, I forgot. When the police turn the screws, it is called cooperation. Turning the screws? Has anybody yet told your father that his daughter's light finger proclivities might jeopardize his position in the government? Haven't I kept mum about your long string of indiscretions? Nice to see you, Inspector. <laughs> in America? They died before I was born. I never forgave them for it. Are we anywhere near the end of the runway yet? a lot of money. It costs me a lot more if they find out it's a stolen car. You stole this car? Yes. To fill a void in my life. Excuse me for mentioning it, but we're about to become a hood ornament for a truck. I don't think so. Could I scare you? Sure. doing? Swell. Excuse me. Thank you. Is he yours? Mm-hmm. Where'd you steal it? The key's under the mat. Oh. Well, that's a terrific hiding place. No one would ever think of looking at it. 
Do you want me to come in and help you turn down the bed? I don't think so. I could lay out your jammies. I don't wear pajamas. I could lay out your nightgown. I don't wear a nightgown. You don't wear anything. You're a god. I think I have to come in and take a cold shower. On the other hand, we say tomato and you say tomato, yet you don't mm. call a potato or mm. a potato. No. No, that would be stupid for you to say really? potato. <laughs> yes? What would you like? Ah, uh, um, a thin slice of that one, please. A thin slice of that one. And some gooseberries. And some gooseberries. Ooh, and one of those meringue tart things. And one of those meringue tart things. And for you, sir? Nothing for me. I'm driving. You sure that's all you want? Mm-hmm. Mm. You know why you ordered so many desserts? Starved for love? Join the club. Excuse me, sir. Yes? And we got a little more out of Dr. Chivers this morning. Uh, he's told us nearly everything. The only thing is, we don't know where he's buried his wife's left leg. Well, stay on it, because it would be a big help if we could put Mrs. Chivers back together before the trial. Yes, sir. Chief Inspector Willis's office. It's your call to Miss Bromley, sir. Mm -hmm. Get the file. Yes, sir. Good morning, my dear. All goes well, I trust. Yes? Yes? And tonight as well. Well, that's perfect. Then I think we'll move on to the next phase. There is a time factor here, after all. That's right, you're already halfway there. Goodbye. Oh, you'll grow to be ten years younger. Yes, sir. Ten more years of this sort of power. Good shot, sir. They let you cook here. They have to. I own the joint. Enjoy the food. My teeth are applauding. Quite remarkable, aren't you? Only quite. You love Chinese food, so you buy a Chinese restaurant. That makes sense. A good investment. You have to work very hard not to work for a living. You don't like work. I saw enough of it when I was a kid watching my folks. Thought you were an orphan. I was one of the lucky ones. I had parents. Of course, I never told them they were adopted. You don't like being pinned down about your past, do you? Past bores me. 
I'm only interested in now. Right now. How about your parents? You have the usual, one of each? My mother was lovely. She died five years ago. My father, he's not quite so lovely. He's very cold, except to strangers, of course. What's Daddy do? He's in the government. Oh. Mm, high up. Very high up. He's not the queen, is he? <laughs> Shall we? I have to say something. What? Not tonight, all right? All right. Still on for tomorrow? Lunch at Les Eggs. Could we make it dinner? Sure. It's better. I like the nights. They're all yours. Only all of them. All of them. Except one. Why except one? It's a very long, boring story. I used to, uh see a man named Maxwell Levy for a rather long, wonderful time, and then it ended mainly because his wife didn't think it was so wonderful. Max is senior partner with Levy and Levy, the big diamond firm in Hatton Garden. Several times a year, Max sends up to a million pounds worth of rough stones to Antwerp for cutting along with all the other diamond houses. One of Max's couriers takes the stones to some central place where they join the others. But the idea is to keep the whole thing very secret, so no one is ever told what time or, indeed, day the shipment is due to take place. You're right. It's a long, boring story. What's it got to do with us? Max always calls me the night before the shipment is due. He considers sleeping with me good luck. Well, it certainly wouldn't hurt him. He wouldn't settle for a rabbit's foot. <laughs> Lucky man, Maxwell Levy. Diamonds. That's not what I meant. I won't sleep with him. I'll only see him. Nay. No. Maybe I should sleep with Mrs. Levy. For luck. you in. I thought I'd pop round for a progress report. How nice of you to call. Do come in, Inspector. You once described yourself as a captive audience. Turn about his fair play. Now it is I who am that to you. Well, I told him your tale of uh, Maxwell Levy, whoever in God's name he is, the shipments to Antwerp, the lot, and he couldn't have cared less. Well, he could hardly have reacted with enthusiasm. That would have been the same thing as admitting that he is what I know him to be. I'm certain that he isn't what you know him to be, Inspector. Certain? He has everything anyone could possibly want. Oh, that's quite beside the point. I told you before, of all the world's thieves, this one is the most gifted. He not only knows how to steal superbly, but even more important, he knows how to fence successfully. I don't quite see why being able to fence them is more important than stealing them. The world is crammed with uh, light-fingered ladies and gentlemen who never realize more than a fraction of the value of the merchandise they so painstakingly purloin. Jack Rhodes is an exception. With his contacts, he gets full value for his exploits. He really is the, the Jack of Diamonds. I'm sure he's not interested in committing any crime. Great masters don't crit at the peak of their powers. The man is not yet 40. 
with a string of successes behind him. There's no way that he's laid down his bow or pushed aside his pallet or bronzed his baton. No. What I think will happen is that very soon he will inquire whether you haven't heard from your old friend, Mr. Levy. And isn't it about time he called? When that happens, we'll know he's taken the bait. I will let him run with the line because I will give you the date of the next shipment to Antwerp. You will pass it on to Rhodes. He will then spring into action. His action, of course, triggering my own. Yes, sir. Listen, I did what you asked. I fed him the information you wanted. You go and get him to rob the courier. Rob the courier? Oh, my dear girl. Knowing what he would then know, do you think Rhodes would settle for a kidney when he can have the whole pie? Once he has that date, the man is bound to go for the entire diamond shipment. We're dealing with the master. And I'm setting him a goal worthy of his stature. With all the police and the security, he's never going to try it. I have the greatest faith in him, as indeed I do in you, my dear. It doesn't trouble you that blackmail is, in fact, against the law. Policemen are constantly breaking the law. It's one of the many ways we have of upholding it. But I give you my word. Help me with Rhodes, and we'll wipe the slate clean. You want to be careful with those eyes. They could be assault with a deadly weapon. The lady that sleeps naked. I thought we had a date this evening. Oh, no, we did. But something came up. See, there's this uh, woman I know, and uh, the night before she races her greyhound, she rings me up, and uh, I talk dirty to her on the telephone. <laughs> Brings her luck. Touche. Hmm. Are you busy tomorrow? No, I'll be free. Oh, terrific. Sensational. Pick you up around one o'clock? I'll be waiting. By the way, I'm glad you called. Of course you are. Trot. Toodaloo. Anything was? No, but you're a loud thinker. It was just a mood. They come and go. This one coming or going? Going. Uh, I think we ought to have this Lance. Hmm. Jack! Jack Rhodes! Hello, Ronnie! Santa Court, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I told you he was there. Gillian <laughs> Bromley, Ronnie Taylor. Hello. Hello. Gillian Bromley, Jack Rhodes. I'd like you to meet Maxwell Levy. Miss Bromley. Mr. Levy. Mr. Rhodes. Great pleasure. I'm told you own the best restaurant in London, Mr. Rhodes. That's what I tell everybody. But why don't you two do a swap? One Chinese dinner for an order of diamonds to go. <laughs> Great idea. We were just thinking of strolling over to court number six, see how young Tracy Austin's getting along. Uh, why don't you two come along with us? You go ahead, I'll join you. Great. 
Do you play tennis, Miss uh, Bromley? Uh, no, no, I don't. Oh, no, I don't either. Beautiful? That was just beautiful. I can see why women find him attractive. He's very handsome right here. What? I said I see why women find him attractive. No, you said you hear. Right. <laughs> what do you mean, you hear? You've just met him. Did I? We are talking about Maxwell Levy. I was. Well, you just met him with that friend of yours, Ronnie Taylor. No, 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 no. You met Maxwell Levy. I met Peter Pritchard. Lovely guy, Peter. Failed actor by trade. Never quite made it. Ronnie said he was born a has-been. <laughs> An actor? Hmm, both of them. They've been married for years. They don't have any children, as far as I know. It's a shame. They've tried so hard. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Of course, we didn't hire him to play the part. Oh, yes, I did. Fifty pounds and the use of my body. After I'm dead. How did you know I didn't know him? When you told me that story about jumping in the sack with him for luck, I hoped it wasn't true. Well, Jillian? Do you know a man called Chief Inspector Willis? Why? Because he knows you extremely well. He's been on to me for some time, but he never did anything about it. He threatened to arrest me from time to time, but I thought he was toying with me. I didn't know what he wanted. It's called policeman's foreplay. He certainly looks positively spiritual when he discusses you. Anyway, about a month ago, he told me he was arranging for us to meet. He knew you were going to be at the Lloyd Palmer party. How'd he get you there? Lloyd Palmer and my father are old friends. They share a lot of the same insensitivities. It was easy for me to be invited. Stealing the diamonds upstairs? I did that on my own. I see. What makes Willis so sure I'm what he thinks I am? Lots of things. Your whereabouts. You appear and suddenly diamonds disappear. Your success in business. Your money coming from no traceable source. Is there anything I can say that you'll believe from now on? Why should I? You haven't been honest with me about anything. The way I feel about you is honest. Oh, sure, your mouth is crazy about me. It's your mind that wants to send me to prison. Don't be silly. That's the last thing I want. Where the hell do you think Willis wants to send me? To summer camp? Now what? You tell your friend, Mr. Willis, that I never mentioned another word about Hatton Garden. Then? And then he tells Daddy about your problem. And you go directly to jail. Charming right to the end. you go to bed with me? I beg your pardon? I'm sure Willis suggested it. It was always implicit in what he said. It would have suited him right down to the ground. Then you laid down on the job. Or rather, you didn't. Why? Because I can't do that unless I care. And you don't. Willis used me because he knew of your weakness for women. Fondness. Bondness. I had no intention of being added to what must be an extremely long list indeed. I did the best I could. All things considered, I think you'd better come in now. <laughs> oh, my God, that's better than speeding. <laughs> does have its high points, doesn't it? It certainly does. Mm. Can you tell me something? Sure. If that dreadful Carrie Grant approach hadn't worked, mm. did you have another one up your sleeve? Of course. I have my fail-safe approach. What's that? Well, 
If I spot a woman at a party that's really beautiful, not as beautiful as you, hmm. beautiful, I kind of sidle up to her and I say, um, excuse me, but I couldn't help but notice you've never really been sexually fulfilled, have you? Well, she says, oh, boring, walks away. And then a few minutes later, I walk up to her and say, no, I mean, have you ever fainted? And I walk away. Well, a few minutes go by, pretty soon her curiosity is kind of peaked, and pretty soon she kind of comes up to me and says, what do you mean, fainted? And I say, well, I mean, at the end of this sexual exercise, do you faint? Because with me, they always, always faint dead away. Well, I didn't faint. Hmm. Well, it's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't Inspector Willis absolutely adore this? Yes. I think we owe him something. <clears throat> now, bringing us together, Something special. What do you suggest? Patton Garden. You're mad. No, I'm not. The only reason I haven't taken a run at those diamonds before is I never did know the exact date they were being shipped to Antwerp. I don't know why I didn't think of asking Scotland Yard. You're exactly what he said you were, aren't you? Only a little better. I'm a collector of diamonds. Especially diamonds that other people have already collected. And you've never been caught. Road 12, police. <sighs> Zero. Who are you calling? Willis. You're calling Willis? You're calling Willis. Why am I calling him? Why are you whispering? You haven't dialed yet. Why am I calling him? Tell him that I mentioned the name Maxwell Levy. Right out of the blue. It's ringing. Good. In a sense, I won't be lying, will I? Only in the sense that you won't be telling the truth. <laughs> Still ringing. Yeah. You can never get a cop when you want one. Yeah, and we don't need this one. I'm not going to go through with it. I need that date. Well, then get it yourself, because I'm not going to do something that's going to put you in jail forever. And besides, I do not wish to be electrocuted. You can't be electrocuted from just six bolts. Besides, if you got such a charge out of stealing two diamond earrings, just think of the charge you will get when you steal $30 million worth of diamonds. So yesterday, Rhodes finally asked about Mr. Levy. I never said so. <laughs> it's perfectly obvious from your mutinous expression. All right, he asked. But you'll have to catch him yourself, because I'm finished. I see. Well, then you'll leave me no alternative but to um, have a word with... Uh... Oh, yes, my father. I've come to a conclusion, Inspector. I really don't think the government and he would miss each other that much. So I think it would be a jolly good idea if you did tell him about me and then we can wipe the slate clean. I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel about it because I have absolutely no intention of passing on the date of that shipment. Well, let me put it another way. Do the names Halliday, Hornfield, Kinsley and Drampton mean anything to you? Uh, no, I don't follow you. They're all women's prisons. Well, it's a fairly large selection of them available in this country. But I think I should point out that they do have one thing in common. They are all poisonously unpleasant. I'll manage somehow. Others have. Yes. Well, let me uh, draw a persuasive little picture for you. Where you will be going, they have the oddest notions of hospitality. First, they shave your head. Then they de you feed you with something that a ravenous crocodile would pass up, then lock you up for the night with unfriendly lesbian companions, and you have your own private little chamber pot under the bed. Oh, it is very unpleasant, I know. That's why I urge you to think again and reflect 
whether you should save yourself all that misery by passing on the date to Rhodes. Well, take your time. Reflect well. I've taken my time and I've reflected well. And? I've decided to save myself all that misery. I'll pass on the date. Splendid. When is it? You get it in a day or two. Run along now. Oh, Inspector, I thought I might send you a little present, a kitten. They're ever such a lot of fun if you strangle them right. Jack, I must say, I don't see the point of poring over all these maps and charts. We're never going to pull it off because we don't have the date. It's as simple as that. Do you really think I don't know that? In any case, I'm getting a little old for all this thievery. Nigel, after this one, we'll quit for keeps. Marry nice girls, have kids, grow fat, drink port. I like port. <laughs> Jack, you need a million dollars. Maybe more. So what? We're going to make $30 million, maybe more. But look, don't you see, there's absolutely no... Do you mind getting in the door? Do you mind? Ah, uh, Nigel Lawton. Yes? Gillian Bromley, hello. I've heard a lot about you. Well, I've heard absolutely nothing whatever about you. Hello, Biddy. Hello. Like another bubble bear? Absolutely love one. <laughs> Did you go all right? Yes, it was fine. Oh, excuse me. What are we talking about? Oh, I know. The date. Uh, Miss Bromley is going to get us the date. You are going to get us the date, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes, she is. And where are you going to get it from? Hatton Garden, I suppose. No, Scotland Yard. All right, don't tell me then. See, I have this great admirer at Scotland Yard. And he's going to go fishing. The date is the bait, and I'm the fish. Jack, I read the other day about a chap in America who used a computer to embezzle oh, $10 million from various people's accounts into a Swiss bank. There's some already made in the kitchen. You listening? Yes. When he got the money, he took it to Russia and bought Do you ten want million. Some coffee? Yes, please. Ten million dollars black, no sugar. Ten million dollars worth of diamonds. When he got what the diamonds sandwich? back on the open market. Sandwich, a biscuit. When he got the diamonds back on the open market, he found that they were worth thirteen million. So far, so good. Then he tried to convert the diamonds back into cash, and that's when they got it. See? Uh, we'll need passports. You haven't listened to a single word I've been saying, have you? All right, passports, what name? Something exotic. Oh, Jack, you're not going to do another of your accents, are you? Jace. All right, what else? Radio man. Well, what about your friend Ferguson, the chap you were in the signal score with? He's been out of the trade for about 10 years. He's a tough cookie, though. Pilot? Ernst Miller. Last I heard, he was flying Cubans into <laughs> Africa. I wonder if Castro knows he's a Nazi. Thank you. Well, who cares? He's a damn good pilot. Yeah. I need someone who knows Amsterdam really well. It shouldn't be too hard. This may be a silly question, but if we are successful, how do we then go about converting the stones into cash? Oh, that's exactly what Jack's the best at. Not as far as I'm concerned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, could we get back to work, please? This is your world traveler from Germany. How are you? A lot better since the phone rang. Oh, 
only teeth in Caracas. I called you as soon as I could. No, I meant the call before yours. My friend finally called, and he wants to see me on the 28th at 11 o'clock. On the 28th? He's got a lot of confidence in me. That's one week. Do you think that you can do it? Of course I can do it. Jack? Yes. I do miss you. Are you in bed? Yes. No nightgown? No. No jammies? Neither. Why don't you meet me in Paris tonight? Plaza Antonay. Really? Nine o'clock. <laughs> I'll be there. Jillian. Yes. Come as you are. Absolutely. Bye bye. Roots. Roots, my friend. Good to see you. Good to see you. If it is Rhodes, it must be diamonds, yeah? Ah, uh, still smart as a bit. When is the job? Soon, London. It is London? It starts in London, and you fly over the channel. You know how many times I fly the channel? Oh, many times. But this time, you won't be carrying any bombs. Won't be nearly as much fun, but then you'll go a lot faster. We dropped more bombs last time. Different story. Well, you, you can't win them all. We don't win any of them. You gotta promise not to strafe any civilians. All these the jokes, hmm? <laughs> what do I fly? HS-125. HS-125. Nice plane. Alone? I need a radio man. No, no. I am very good with radio. I don't know how to tell you this, Rich, but... You have a German accent. What German accent? I already have another man. OK, OK, whatever you say. Uh, who else have you found? Nigel Lawton. Good man. Uh, please, uh, one more question. Three million dollars. That is my share. That is your share. Three million? You see this? Yes. I have no words. I need you in London tomorrow. Tomorrow? I will already be there one day. Jillian Bromley. Come on. You sit up front with the rhythm section, all right? Ah, 
I see the Salvation Army still making your clothes. So you're still faking it on the piano. Mean to me. Why is he always so mean to me? Ah, uh, you know, long as I keep missing the cracks. Hey, it's been a while, Jack. Been a while and a half. How do you like Paris? Ah, uh, the people are cool. I'm all right. Can't complain. You bear leaving them for a while, come to London? Any special place in London? Hatton Garden. Some alpha gonna lose a bit of inventory? All of them. Ain't misbehaving. Very ambitious, this guy. Man's gotta grow. Who else is in on the gig? Nigel. Mm, lovely, lovely. Ernst Mueller. Do I know him? You were in the German army, were you? <laughs> I flunked the color test. <laughs> How about it, you in? Tell me about the wages. I'll give or take a few, Bob. Thirty million dollars. You get ten percent. I'm misbehaving. <laughs> you provide lunch? You got it. All right. Gotta make a phone call. The man's a natural high, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You've known him a long time. Mm-hmm. Why has he never been called? Because he's too damn smart. What would happen if, um, somebody crossed him? I hate to even think about that, baby. <laughs> Sam, I thought I told you never to play that song. Sorry, boss. Got to catch a plane to Amsterdam. Call Nigel, he'll give you all the details. Grab your coat and grab your hat. Beautiful city, Amsterdam. It's where all the light bulbs come to have a vacation. <laughs> Nigel says it's de Gouye. He's the best driver in Europe, and he really knows the city well. Well, what about me? I'm fast. I know, I know. You'd like to drive. No offense, but you're just a little too kamikaze for me. Why don't we just leave the job to a profession? Oh, don't the shops stay open late here? Don't let the red lights throw you. All they have here are massage parlors, leather whips, bondage, French lessons. It's kind of a home away from home. Mm-hmm. Ah. Here we are. You know what always surprises me? Some of these girls are really very chic and elegant and fat. Is de Gouye in? Come in and sit down. <laughs> I wouldn't sit there. You might catch something. <laughs> you don't know where that couch has been. Hello. Hello. Can I help you? Oh, uh, just waiting. See me? De Gouye? You want to have some business here? Someone for you both, or to watch, or what? No, something a little different, actually. Whatever you like. If you show us once, we can do it. <laughs> I'm Jack Rhodes. Oh, good. Sit down. We talk. Uh, couldn't we go somewhere a little more private? They can't hear, and she's dead above the waist. So, you need a driver. Right. We're talking about a lot of money. Yeah. Do you need anything else, like making people disappear, either temporarily or permanently? I can do both tricks. You do that a lot, I bet. I like it. What about terrorist work? You like that, too? Terrorist is a dangerous word. I prefer mercenary. So, what do you think? I think I don't like you. I've only known you a few minutes, but already I don't like you for years. Let's go. You came here to insult me. No, it just worked out that way. Move. Or what? I don't want to have a fight in a whorehouse window. It caused a lot of commotion. You don't want to be with this boy, do you? Don't push your luck. Incredible face, you know. If you work for me, I could retire. <laughs> Cyril, hurry up! Your breakfast's getting cold as usual. Cyril, I don't like your tie. You gave it to me, dear. That's no excuse. Cyril, 
Look at the newspaper. Something in it? The date. That made the front page again. It's the 25th. Six more days and you'll finish at the yard. Hopefully in a blaze of glory. My final case, the capstone of my career. <laughs> what difference will it make? Uh, it has to do with something sacred. Cyril, you're making no sense, as usual. This is about the sanctity of property. Of all the crimes of which man is capable, the one that really rankles my soul is the violation of property. Or oh, there is your murder, of course. Rape, kidnap, wife beating. Ridiculous. But life, however precious, life perishes. It's only property that lives on and on. Now, the man I intend to arrest has the presumption to usurp for himself that which we consider to be the most valuable property of all. Diamonds. The dearest, noblest, most direct link we have with the very core of the planet itself. The filthy bugger. Yes, dear. I'll answer it. A3. Oh. Um, hold on a moment. It's Pilbro. He says it's a matter of some importance. Hello, Pilbro. What? That's not possible. Tell them we'll come at once. I'll meet you there. Trouble, dear. Try catastrophe. Yeah, I'm afraid it's final, Inspector. Diamond House has decided to make the shipment on the 10th of next month rather than the 28th. Well, may I remind you, sir, of the many anonymous tips we've received in the past? We were never this close to a shipment, and never so specifically Hatton Garden. What exactly did the caller say about the 28th? Well, he merely said to watch for trouble at that time. I mean, that's good enough for us. Let me assure you, sir, but nothing, nothing at all will happen. I personally will stay with the shipment until it's safely on its way to Luton Airport. Then I'll fly on ahead to Antwerp and cover its arrival there. Well, why would you not fly all the way with them yourself, Inspector? Because I want to make quite sure that the Belgian police have taken all possible precautions at their end. But I hope you're not taking this too lightly, Inspector. I must urge you, sir, most strongly not to alter your date. Once you do that, from then on, Diamond House will have his timetables dictated by tipsters. Give us one hour. Inspector Willis. Yes, Bill Brock. We've just had a call from Diamond House, sir. Oh? No. The 28th, it is. Are you pleased, sir? Of course I'm pleased. I'm just not able to applaud at this particular moment. But have you any idea, sir, who might have given the tip? Yes, I have. I did. You, sir? How else can we get the massive security we need? You're a genius, sir. An out-and-out -out genius. In a few more days, I may be a retired out-and-out -out genius. Sir? No more villains to hunt. No more midnight oil being burnt, stalking the prey. From now on, it's the slippers and the pipe, and listening to the chimes of that bloody clock in the mantelpiece, and to Mrs. Willis, of course. But before that happens, I'm going to get Rhodes. The thought of him rotting in jail might make my rotting at home slightly more bearable. Yes, quite, sir. And what is he up to? Now, we know he's been in Germany and Paris and seen Muller and Ferguson, but I don't understand what he would want with an engineer and a piano player. The answer to that question is absolutely nothing. But he might want a great deal from an ex-pilot and an ex-air traffic controller. Don't answer it. It's been so long since I've had you to myself. Now then, I'm too old to play the cat and you're far too pretty for a mouse. You promised to leave me alone. I intend to keep that promise. The minute you stop breaking it. Exactly. So you gave Rhodes the date? Yes. And? There is no and. That was the end of it. The subject never came up again? It did not. Immediately thereafter, he just started hopping from country to country? How did you know that? Because Her Majesty's police and Her Majesty's immigration both happened to work for the same Majesty. Why did you go to Germany? I don't know. Have you any idea why you joined him in Paris and Amsterdam? He is supposed to find me attractive, remember? Oh, yes. Where did you go in Amsterdam? 
I went to the red light district. I found an extremely nice little place right... Where was Rhodes during all this um, art appreciation? He was with me. All the time? Yes. You're lying, you know. Please yourself. Still mutinous? Well, in case you need to bolster your flagging enthusiasm for our little project, let me assure you, women's prisons have not altered one whit since we last talked about them. One more turn of the screw. Well, I don't think you can catch him anyway, so I might as well tell you. He went to these countries to try to recruit help. I don't know who he saw because I waited behind to get the date from you. How does he plan to steal them? Hello. Hello. Should I come back? No, you're um just in time to meet someone. Hello. Chief Inspector Willis, Jack Rhodes. Ah, Mr. Rhodes, Chief Inspector. Oh, Inspector's quite sufficient. Chief always strikes me as somewhat um, tribal. <laughs> um, the inspector is an old friend of the family. I've known Julian ever since she was a little girl, stealing around the house. Just uh, visiting our country, Mr. Rhodes? No, I'm um, a permanent resident, actually. Really? Mm. What is it, the, the damp and the drizzle that dazzles you? No, I'm one of England's foul weather friends. <laughs> That's very good. Lots of exciting challenges over here. You enjoy a good challenge, do you? If the prize is right. I like him. I knew you would. Well, I'm afraid I must get back to the yard. Your work must be very exciting. Oh, it's routine, mostly, but it does have its rewards, though. At least it did. I shall be retiring in just a few days. Oh. Mandatory, unfortunately. Why is that? Well, it seems that I had the bad taste to uh, age rather than die on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that hardly seems fair, does it? I mean, your side has to retire, and the other side just becomes little old rich bad guys. <laughs> That's right. Not very fair on me, either. I have to retire on a most measly little pension. But I shall miss it all, the criminals, the immorality, the deception, all the things that make life worthwhile. <laughs> well, I mustn't complain. I've, I've achieved uh, pretty much what I set out to do. Lots of heads on the wall? One always felt there was room for just one more. Hmm. Well, I hope to see you again. Oh, I'm sure you will. Would you, uh, would you be my guest? Oh, how kind. Your restaurant? People say the food's good enough to eat. <laughs> I might just take you up on that. Now, if you should find yourself in the vicinity of Scotland Yard before the week's out, one never knows. Oh, well, I'd love to see it. I'd love to show it to you. Goodbye, Inspector. I'll show myself out there. Oh, and give my very best to your father. <laughs> Did he dust your entire body for my fingerprints? God, don't joke about it. You don't seem to appreciate how much he wants you. Oh, I do. I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Do you know what? I want you. When? Now. Where? Wherever. I have to make a phone call. Hmm, do you need permission? Cute. Nigel. I have to talk fast, Nigel. I, um, I need a, a vehicle. Do you arrange that? Good. I have a driver. Best. What about the Pakistanian Arabian situation? You know, Turan Bay and Maria Montez. Uh -huh. Excellent. I'll call you back, Nigel. Something just came up.
Morning, Miss Bromley. Hello. Ta-da. Uh-huh. How are they getting along? Muller and Fergie? Yeah. Oh, Muller loves him. I think it must be his dark glasses. You have enough decals? Yes, plenty, I should think. Radio. Yep, in here. Any problems getting the plane? No, one has one's friends. Here's the lease. You'll be pleased to see that we're a Panamanian corporation. Based in Beirut. With a Liechtenstein charter. Did you remember to write in diamond thieves? No, no, I put dope smugglers. Didn't want to arouse the suspicion. <sighs> Very sensible. Hello, Fergie. Hey, Jack, how are you? How do you like the plane? Excellent. Beautiful. It's a Steinway. Good to see you. Remember Jillian? Hello, Miss Bromley. We Hi. meet again. Yes. Ernst Miller, Jillian Bromley. Hello. Uh, he doesn't talk much. Jack, when are you going to tell us the date? The day before the caper. Well, that's not very sporting of you. What's the matter? Don't you trust us? You're right. It's the 28th. Good. God, that's tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's the day before the caper. Miss Bromley is in this with us? Without Miss Bromley, there'd be no this to be in. Oh, so? We had von Ihnen, Miss Bromley. Oh, absolutely. What did he say? I think he wants to jump you. <laughs> British Overseas Airline, flight number 76, now arriving from London. Welcome to Antwerp. Le vol numéro 76 de la British Overseas Airlines arrive maintenant de Londres. Soyez les bienvenus en l'air. Monsieur Sharma? Yes, sir. I'm Mr. Sharma. Yes, sir. Can I help you, sir? Monsieur Wife? This is my wife. This is my wife, yes, sir. Uh, lower the veil. Could you lower your veil, my dear? She's shy to the point of modesty. Thank you for the excellent stamping of my passport. Good day. the worst Peter Sellers I have ever heard. I wasn't doing Peter Sellers. I was doing Peter Sellers doing Omar Sharif. <laughs> you suspect are under strict surveillance. My men have followed the couple to L'Hotel Splendide. Now, why should we not arrest them? Because as yet, there's no evidence against them. If the diamonds are taken anywhere, my guess is it will happen in Antwerp, somewhere between the airport and their arrival in the city. But why should you think the diamonds are in danger? Do you have some inside information? Have you perhaps had a tip of... Instinct, Inspector. The best part of a policeman, which allows him to think like a criminal. No, I'm only asking your permission for me to, to be in on the case. In on the case? But if, as you say, there is no evidence, well, there is no case. Of course, I simply mean that I'd like to be in on the case, just in case there is one. A case, if you, if you follow me, Dick. Oh, dear. Look, once I'm quite sure that the diamonds are safely on their way from Hatton Garden, I will fly on ahead to Antwerp and meet you at the airport before they arrive. Do I have your cooperation? Rest assured, we shall do everything possible to make sure that the shipment is safe. Always a pleasure to talk with you, Inspector. The man is a lunatic. Good night.
Another shipment ready to go. It'll be the normal routine for loading. Yes, sir. I don't mean to be rude, but what exactly are we doing here? Well, we're in Holland. I thought I'd show you a windmill. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> What's this supposed to be? This is what you drive to get us into the airport. And hopefully out. Uh -huh. How did it get here? Nigel arranged it. Oh, he's a handy man. Smart, too. If we botch this up, he'll still be alive. From this moment on, it starts to get sticky. So if you want out, now's the time to say so. When you say out, what do you mean? You tell me. What's my share in this? Charming. Right to the end. You haven't told me anything about it. I don't know what's going to happen. I never tell anybody everything. Never? If I told you everything, I'd scare the hell out of you. I doubt it. One more thing. What? I love you. Diamonds are being loaded at this very moment. I'll see you shortly. All secure, sir. Our people are in position, ready and waiting. Oh, very good. I just spoke to Inspector Vanderbilt. Our couple is still under surveillance in the hotel. Excellent, sir. Well, I'm on my way to Antwerp. Good hunting, sir. Take it easy. Plenty of time. You don't have to drive to the airport fast. Don't panic.
Tango. Mother's in the maternity ward. Did you say mother? I said mother. Mother's on the way to delivery room. Romeo Tango, ready for takeoff. Romeo Tango, clear for takeoff. Service wind 055-13 knots. Romeo Tango, rolling. Mother's given birth. V1. VR. V2. V1, rotate. V2. Gear up. Gear up. Gear up. Gear up. Getting close to the midway point. We gotta be near him when London switches him over to Antwerp. He's somewhere here. There's only one sky between us. Tango. Romeo Tango, this is Antwerp. We have an emergency. The airfield is closed. Divert to Amsterdam. Antwerp, this is Golf. Romeo Tango. We are diverting to Amsterdam. Give me a heading for Amsterdam. That's the fourth time. The last three months they've diverted us. Your new course is 067. Amsterdam, this is Golf. Bravo, bravo, Romeo Tango. We are diverting from Antwerp. <laughs> Antwerp before they groove in on Amsterdam, eh? What would I do? Ouch.
shot in the far side of the field. safely on its way. Ah, splendid. Then we're almost halfway there. Ah, right on time. What do we do now? We wait. Good morning, Antwerp. This is Golf Bravo Bravo Romeo Tango. Romeo Tango Roger. On our way to six right. Wind is southwest at nine and knots. Gear down. Gear down. Three green. So far, so good. Now we are halfway there. Bravo, Bravo, Romeo Tango. Romeo Tango, go ahead. Amsterdam, this is Golf Romeo Tango. Request landing clearance. Romeo Tango, Roger, clear for final approach. Runway 17 left. The wind is southwest at seven knots. Gear down. Gear down. Three greens. All right, here we go, beauty.
Inspector. Our fears seem to have been for naught. Absolutely worthless. Mad. Coming back. You can get in touch with my lawyer. You mean you're leaving? What an amazing deduction. Well, I might one inquire what made you decide so suddenly? It's not sudden. Why should I stay with you now that you're an ex chief inspector who's the laughing stock of the whole country? Charity, perhaps? Charity begins abroad. Registered letter for the Chief Inspector. Ex-Chief Inspector. Sorry to hear about that, Mrs. Willis. Ex-Mrs. Willis. Your Royal Highness. Bye, Cyril. to us. And the late Inspector Wilkes. How he must have felt when they opened that box at Antwerp, just quartz. Oh, it is so beautiful, darling. It must be nearly as big as the Star of India. The 
dumbest, most moronic thing any man has ever done. Quartz. What? The whole lot was quartz. Everything we took from Amsterdam was quartz. I have a question, but you must give it to me very gently. The packet in Antwerp was quartz, right? Right. The packet we picked up in Amsterdam was quartz? Right. And here is my question. Where are the diamonds? Pleasant trip? First class all the way. Ah. Any problems with customs? No, I had no problems. I've, uh, I've still got my uh, Scotland Yard ID card. You remember Miss Bromley? Oh, Miss Bromley, how nice to see you again. I was trying to explain, Miss Bromley, who has the diamonds. Ah, yes. Well, I have the diamonds. He has the diamonds. I'm here to sell them to uh, Mr. Rhodes. You have the diamonds? The Scotland Yard Chief Inspector in charge of shipments has ample opportunity to switch things around. He's pulled off the perfect crime, except for one thing. He doesn't know who to sell the diamonds to now. That's right. If I'd gone looking for a fence, they'd have been delighted to turn me in, of all people. I don't believe this. How much do you want for the diamonds? Well, uh, <laughs> would you think that uh, one million dollars is fair? No. I don't think one million dollars is fair. I think three million dollars is fair. Well, let me say this. I prefer your definition of fair. <laughs> I thought you would. Then you two have been conspiring together all the time. No, we've never actually conspired. You could call us non-conspiring conspirators. For instance, he knew there wouldn't be any diamonds in Antwerp. <laughs> I wish you could have seen my expression of mortification and humiliation. I thought I did it rather well. Yes, I bet you did do it rather well. You tailed me rather well. And discovered everything you wanted me to discover. The pilot, the wizard radio operator. In other words, the second plane. And Amsterdam. It is the only other city on the Diamond Run. Darling, what was it that made you aware of what was going on? Well, first of all, there was his obsession with catching me, blackmailing you, trusting that you wouldn't double-cross or report him, and that boring, boring story about Max Levy. <laughs> You caught on fairly soon, huh? Mm. Roughly how soon? No, roughly immediately. <laughs> it was soon. <laughs> then you two were exchanging signals in my flat. Yes. Yeah. Would like some champagne? Oh, thank you. Ah. So the fact the inspector went to Antwerp told you that he wanted you to get away with it in Amsterdam. And that is why you were almost positive that the diamonds we stole would be fixed, right? Wrong. I was absolutely positive. Unidentified parties, steals, fakes. Everyone assumes they're diamonds, but they'd already been stolen. Sheer perfection. I've always had this slight fondness for sheer perfection. God, you've gotten away with stealing $30 million. Yes, but $30 million won't buy what it used to. 